Eid Mubarak The Feast of Sacrifice, is based on the famous story found in the Quran and the Bible where Ibrahim was commanded to kill his son. God miraculously intervened and spared the son. Surah 37 verse 107 reads, And we ransomed him with a momentous sacrifice. Why was the sacrifice, a ram, even necessary? Ibrahim passed the test. Why is the sacrifice called, momentous, especially when compared with Abraham's son? Surely, he is greater, more important, than a ram. The greatness of this sacrifice cannot be found in its use as a symbol for human self-purification or devotion, or to commemorate Abraham's faithfulness. If that was the case, there would be no need for God himself to provide such a great sacrifice. The answer to these questions is found in the origin of the word sacrifice. The Encyclopedia Britannica defines it as, a religious rite in which an object is offered to a divinity in order to establish, maintain, or restore a right relationship of a human being to the sacred order. It is a complex phenomenon that has been found in the earliest known forms of worship and in all parts of the world. According to the Torah, the very first recorded sacrifice to God in the history of mankind was made by Adam's two sons, Cain and Abel, known by Muslims as Kabul and Habel. His sacrifice was accepted by God because he was righteous. What made him right before God? Why did he prefer the sacrifice of the one over the other? Where did this idea of sacrifice come from in the first place? The Quranic account does not tell us. For an answer we need to turn to the primary sources, the Torah and the Injil where the same incident was recorded before with additional details. By faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man, when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks, even though he is dead. God accepted Abel's sacrifice because it was offered in faith. On what revelation of God was it based? Let us first look at circumstantial evidence. Both the Torah and the Holy Quran, contain the story of how God created Adam and Eve. In paradise they were allowed to eat from all trees except one. Tempted by Satan they disobeyed God and as a result of this monstrous sin they became aware of their nakedness and covered their shame with leaves. God pronounced a terrible punishment upon them. They and their descendants had to leave paradise, being unable to continue enjoying a carefree life and most of all, a personal relationship with their creator. The following significant detail is mentioned only in the Torah. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. God provided them with clothes made from animal skins to replace their insufficient covering of leaves. Is he illustrating by this that men by themselves are unable to cover their shame caused by sin without the shedding of blood? Did God teach Adam and Eve the concept of sacrifice on this momentous occasion which they then passed on to their children? Two pieces of direct evidence allow us to answer in the affirmative. Many years after our first parents, God appointed Moses as the leader of the Israelites. At the heart of God's relationship with his people was an elaborate system of various sacrifices. By way of offering animals, they were absolutely certain that their sins were forgiven. Surah 17, verses 1 to 7 mentions the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins was a vital ritual performed in the temple, the very heart of its existence. Both, Muslims and Christians, agree that the blood of animals cannot take away sin. All three of God's books, the Torah, Zabur and the Injil, indicate that the sacrifices in the past point to a perfect sacrifice that was to come. It was to be a unique person identified as the Messiah, a title given only to Jesus in the Quran. What a profound and wonderful truth! Shame is taken away. Sins are forgiven. God is pleased when we believe in his final sacrifice. This truth is foreshadowed in the famous story of Ibrahim and his son. It points to the perfect sacrifice found in Jesus Christ. It cannot have been abrogated. Otherwise, according to Surah 2, verse 106, it would have to be replaced with something similar or better. What better could be offered to us than God personally dealing with our sins and with the shame we brought upon him and ourselves, by supplying a great sacrifice for us in Jesus Christ? The literal meaning of the word, Injil, is, good news. Having defeated death, Jesus rose to life again on the third day. Before he went to heaven, 
the Messiah said that the way to properly respond to this best news God has ever given to mankind is to repent and to simply believe that Jesus died as a punishment for our sins. Once a person trusts in what Jesus did and said, through the power of the Holy Spirit God will produce in them assurance of forgiveness instead of uncertainty, joy instead of sadness, selfless love and forgiveness instead of selfish hatred and fear. To live in such a sacrificial way in thankful response to God giving us eternal life with him comes at a high price. Followers of Jesus are told in the Holy Bible to be ready to suffer through persecution, by surrendering all of their life to God and his will. But surely it is only right to give to God what we cannot keep anyway in order to win what we cannot lose. Here are details on how to get sources, more information of what was said in this video and where to write to for questions and comments.